Today we're going to discuss a new paper, uh, Cross Iteration Batch Normalizations. This paper is being used inside the work of YOLO v4. And um, again, this is my personal uh, reading note. So the intuitions of this presentation is try to tell um, how does this um, techniques being applied inside the YOLO v4 and why does it help for. Okay, let's jump to the agenda. So we're going to talk about the first point is the problem of batch normalization. Of course, there's a problems and that's why um, there is new papers trying to solve that problem. And we're going to talk about a brief go through the normalization techniques. And, and then we're going to bring up the motivations why using this cross iteration batch normalizations and what is uh, this cross iteration batch normalization about the key assumptions is the Tyler expansion. Later we'll talk about the detail. And then we're talk, gonna talk about some overhead for computations and memory. And at the end we show some uh, performance result. So we we know that the, in 2015 uh, the batch normalization is there. And it talk about that the internal covariance shift problems and could be solved using this batch normalization approach. And I have, I have not a videos talking about exactly that papers. Please refer to that. It would be good to have the foundations of batch normalization then come to this, uh, the latest uh, cross iteration batch normalization techniques. So uh, in brief, the batch normalization needs a certain size of the batch size to collect in the sufficient enough statistics data to, to calculate the mean and variance in order to do the normalization. However, since nowadays that the task usually require a lot of um, um, the memory consumptions, for example, the object detection, semantic segmentations, those things, the first thing is your image quality increase. And if you want to have the more batch size, that will have a, a very strong assumption. You have a very good GPU. Otherwise, you cannot handle those tasks. And inside, bring back a bit to the to the uh, YOLO v4 um, ideas, right? The YOLO v4 paper is trying to execute uh, all the pipeline on one GPU. That's why um, it's very important for, for YOLO v4's authors to make sure that all the techniques apply, it's memory efficient and, and can be applied on a single GPU. Okay, now bring back to, to the, this paper. Uh, we're going to talk about some some normalization techniques. Um, the the there are mainly few things you can do normalization. The first is the input, like the image input size. You usually would do RGB normalization. That's the thing you all know. And then the second is the activation uh, normalization. That is batch normalization is one of that because inside these hidden layers, you would take that activations and normalize that, and before it jump to the next next uh, level of layers. Right, and, and the third one is the, the weights. You can, of course, uh, normalize also the weights um, for before it's multiplied with the, with the uh, input or activations uh, within the layers. So in the right-hand side, you can see this table. And that is actually um, some example, famous example for the activation normalization techniques is focus on the activations. So you can see here has instance normalization, layer normalization, group normalization, and batch normalization, and sync normalization. And CBN is today's paper across iteration batch normalization. So they are they have a pros and cons. They cross a different domain. If you can see the last column, the norm access, that is to telling you what x what is the access um, it uh, it cross, right? So if we see the batch normalization here, we know that it it cross it calculate across the certain batch size, and that is exactly the things the other techniques try to avoid because if you have the problem. You don't have enough memory. You cannot you cannot afford uh, enough batch. So so the famous paper is a group norm here. So group norm is they try to cross the channel wise information instead of having a more batch. So you can always use in a single image and to to do some normalization techniques here. So the group norm actually has a very good performance. However, the only one drawback is uh, during inference time it's it's slow. Okay, and if you have a multiple GPUs, right, you, you, you of course can choose sync 
batch normalizations that you can across even different GPUs. So you have a let's say you have more memory, you can remember um, you can remember for example four image on a single GPU. Then if you have a four GPU, then you have sixteen image. Um, then you can calculate the statistic among them. So inside today's paper, cross iteration batch normalization is trying to cross time domain. So if you see here, there's iteration. Later we'll talk about the detail, but just try to remember that uh, the cross iterations based on the name, it cross the iteration and that iteration means across the time domain. So here I just trying to re-emphasize the problem why the cross iteration batch normalization is a is a problem because um, you don't have in what if you don't have enough um, mini batch right so if the if the mini batch is small then you have a bad statistics and it's very noisy then your training tend to be uh, not converge will be diverge so the cross iteration batch normalizations joins multiple recent iterations to 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 solve the problem so you tr uh, the next um, diagram maybe show more intuitive how does it work so if you see here if you see in the upper part there is a uh, different iterations right the most right hand side you have iteration t means the current time domain current time and then if you cross one time back the t minus one and t minus two here the upper part uh, the upper part there is is written batch normalizations, right? So inside the normal batch normalization, what are you do? Uh, what what are you doing is actually you calculate the batch size, and then you you calculate the mean and variance across this batch size. So that's only one single um, things you will get as a result. However, if you see the lower part, the cross iteration batch normalization actually in it not only calculate the current time snap informations, there's also the blue arrows. You see that it's crossed the previous iterations to get the means and variance um, to, to sum, them, sum them up together. Okay, so you might think what is the problem? Uh, it sounds very intuitive. Why, why the others didn't think about this idea? You basically just remember those uh, means and variance at the previous iterations and then you add them up. However, the thing is not that simple. That is a very naive approach what you are doing. The only problem is when you think uh, what is actually happening inside the neural network trainings, right? You are training a network means your weights are changing all the time across the time, right? So when you are changing your weights across the time and then uh, means that at the time t you will have the different weights compared to the time t minus one and of course that means your means and variance will be also changed so if you just naively sum them up of course there are different weights then that will cause a very bad result as you can see in the left diagram here the red um, the, the red line here, the naive CBN is exactly if you didn't take into account of the weights are different and then you just sum them up together, you will see the performance is really bad. Okay, so um, how, how do we solve the problem is actually the key assumptions of, of today's paper. We talk about at the agenda that the key assumption is the Tyler expansions, uh, is a Tyler series, right? So if you see the, the, the right upper part, the highlight, we observe that the weights change smoothly between consecutive iterations due to the nature of gradient-based training. Because when you're doing the, great, uh, the, the training, you use gradient descent or the other technique, similar approach, you are using a gradient-based approach. And this gradient based approach actually they they tend to they they tend to change the weights in a consecutive times they are very s smooth. So um, it, of course you would think this is not the case. Uh, of course during the beginning of the training your weights change will be a, will be shift a lot. Yes, you are you are totally right. So there is one pitfall for this techniques cross iteration batch normalization. Don't use this at the beginning of your training. 
you should wait a bit. The training gets more stable, a little bit stable. Then you apply this cross iteration batch normalizations because then in that condition, you will fulfill the Tyler expansions assumption here that the weights change are become smooth. Okay, so if you see the, the formula, the five and six down there, um, while you are doing, what you are doing is you're trying to approximate, you're trying to approximate the previous um, mean and variance by the current weight, right? So in the, in, the, in the left hand side of the equal sign, you see we have a previous um, mean and variance, but we have the current weight, right? Because the current weight is what we know and the, cur and the previous mean with the previous weight also is what we know. But we don't know what is the previous mean within the current weight. So that's exactly what we're trying to approach, right? Because we talked about before, the weights are keep changing. So you already know the, the T minus one, the previous time weights and means, it doesn't mean you will know the previous mean given the current weights. So that's exactly what we're trying to approach in the tile expansion here. And if you can see here, we're trying to truncate it on the, on the second order. Um, we only lift uh, under the second order because the higher order terms will, will be canceled out. And why would it be canceled out? Because of our assumption, the way change between the consecutive time is small. And exactly the T, the way T minus way T minus tau, tau means the previous time. And that um, based on our assumptions, that value should be go close to zero. So if you have a three, uh, you, you have a, uh, cubic terms, then that would be very close to zero. And that's why we can truncate it in this um, value here, the second order. There's a little bit math here. Click the link uh, approximation there. There's a uh, three, bl three blue, one brown. He has a perfect uh, explanation for tile expansion if you want to refresh your memory. So um, if we see the comparison between the batch normalization and cross iteration batch normalization, which is in the, in the right hand size, we see that it's just basically adding a time domain. And this time domain, you basically try to tra trace um, the previous time, right? You, 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 you have t minus tau here, tau, and, and the tau value means how, what is the previous iterations we want to trace back there. And there is a small, small trick here in, inside the papers that for the variance, you need to calculate the, the maximum um, between the theoretical value you calculate from the tally expansions and what is the actual value you observe here because the variance means uncertainty. Uncertainty, you always need to take the maximum uncertainty to try to be more realistic here. Okay, so um, that's the a certain overhead during the training. Because if you check the if you check the YOLO v4 paper or my YOLO v4 video, you will know that uh, batch normalization is actually a bag of freebies. So bag of freebies means you only do these things during the training because what batch normalization do is actually you impose two extra parameters and you try to learn that. And during the inference, actually, it's just a simple. Uh, um, linear transformation functions, right? So the, for, for the computational overhead during the tr inference, it's really, really low. The, the, the true overhead is actually happens in the training. And now come to the com uh, cross iteration batch normalization, which is today's paper. You need to track the previous iterations across the time domain. Of course, then you'll need to remember more information that means you will have more gradients of chain rule you need to comp compute during the uh, the, the back prop propagations training time. And also you will need more memory overhead to remember all those information. And that is exactly the overhead here. There's 11% of computational overhead during the training, 7% memory overhead during the training as well. And if you see in the inference, which is in this table here, you can see the batch normalizations inference time is 6.2 uh, um, iteration per second. 
So it's faster than group norm, which is a second one, and it's the same as the cross iteration batch normalization CBN. Um, it's the same time because, of course, during the inference time, they are all doing the linear transformations, uh, no matter it's a normal original BN or the current paper CBN here. So they are faster than group norm. That's the that's the bottom line information because uh, that's exactly what um, Yolo V4 trying to achieve uh, fast in inference as well. So now, um, if you notice, we always talking about you need to trace back to the previous time. The previous time. So if it's the t minus one or t minus two, and you might think. What, what is the T minus, I really can go there, right? And this really need an ablation study and empirical um, research. Because if you remember, we go back to the Tyler expansion here. If you have a really old time uh, timestamp and you want to go to that point, then the assumption of the Tyler expansion will not be or the, the will not be true anymore because the weight change need to be smoothly across the consecutive iterations and you want to make sure that consecutive iteration is close enough in order to, to have this uh, very close uh, result so you can truncate it here on your Tyler expansion otherwise you will have the higher order terms and you are not considered here so that whole assumption will break if you tra trace really back to the time so the ablation study here in this paper, they say the k equal to a is a good number here. It means that you can trace back to uh, previous uh, seven iterations here. And then we're going to see some final performance of, of the this paper. So one thing to notice, right, what we're trying to solve in this paper is if you don't have enough batch, no, batch size for the for the batch, original batch normalizations, right? So if you see the right, let's, let's first see the, the, the left-hand side. The left-hand side is you have a batch size 32, which is sufficient enough. So you can see the batch normalizations and cross iteration batch normalization has a very good result, okay? Because there is a sufficient statistic data for batch normalization. And if you see the right-hand side and the upper part is showing that what is the size of batch? And if you see the lower the number is, the worse uh, the performance for the original batch normalization because there's no statistic, statistic uh, sufficient data anymore. But if you see the, the cross iteration batch normalization is still maintain a certain accuracy. And if you see uh, the most extreme case, the batch size equal to one, you see here the group norm is actually shine here because they are really good, they cross the channel domain, but in cross iteration batch normalization, it still perform a very good result here. So if you use a physics way of thinking, and that is the cross iteration batch normalization, actually they are a superset of the batch normalizations, right? Because it contains the different time domain informations, which include the current time, which is batch normalization. So it's obvious that the performance of the CBN will be the superset of the BN under the different circumstances. And yeah, that is uh, that is all for for today's presentations. Uh, I want to talk about the CBN. Just trying to shortly recap the problem uh, CBN trying to solve is whenever there is not enough uh, batch size, how can you do? And there's a bunch of different papers um, contribute their idea. The CBN, what is special is they contribute the idea to cross the time to us to 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 collect uh, the statistics data. And the most important thing is the assumptions of the weight change across the cons consecutive iterations is very smooth. So you can use Tyler expansions to approximate uh, the mean and variance there. So you can make whole calculation meaningful. And that's all for today's presentation. Thank you.